how can real estate investing change your life? Yeah, and we've never really done a, a seminar like this where we're actually going to pick apart and showcase our clients and what they're doing. So you can see if you can do it too or if you want to do it at all. How real estate investing can change your life. There's a little typo in there, so I'm not going to keep this slide up for very long. But anyways, we're going to get started with the seminar. Um, one thing we want to do in this seminar is showcase a heck of a lot of our clients and the successes that they're having. So anyone could be successful if you invest in real estate the right way. Who we have here on this slide is Charles and Havana. Charles and, Havana. and their story is actually pretty common in this part of the country because there's lots of people moving in from other parts. Yeah, we love these guys. Yeah. They were following us on our Fru TV for about a year, they said, Tim. Yeah. We actually didn't meet them at all. And they, they moved here from Burnaby, BC. And... Um, Charles is from Turkey and Havana's from Ukraine. the Ukraine and they moved to Canada for a better life. Mm -hmm. And as they watched our YouTube videos, they, they really got inspired by um, real estate investing and that's their plan to move forward. Yeah, we loved it. And funny enough, they moved to Burnaby and BC just came out with a new law, Tim must be six months old now, that... Um, Certain drugs are legal. Yeah. I don't know the exact. They legalized the use of hard drugs. Hard. Okay. So, and there was already a problem there. Like, like I, I've been downtown Vancouver. I was there earlier this year, and um, and I've seen it. Yeah. You know, and it's not nice. And you know what? They didn't move here for that. And they were living in a shoebox in Burnaby, and for the same price, Tim, of that shoebox, they bought a half duplex here in Mackenzie Town. Um, and they just couldn't believe the value that they're getting for the same price as a one bedroom apartment in Burnaby. So we bought this property and, and these guys, they don't have tenants yet, but we bought this property as a stepping stone for them. So by buying it as a stepping stone, they moved into it. They could put 5% down. Um, I think Tim, they picked it up for about 420 or 415. Yeah. Um, and it's a beautiful property. It's actually... Um, on our crew TV, you can see it. But now they're here, they're already talking about their next property. It looks like they need to do a JV to get the next one. So we're in the background working towards finding them a partner, educating them on doing joint ventures, understanding the roles, and then hopefully buying them a property. So that's how it works with just people that are just moving here that want to get into the investment game. Yeah. So what do you have to consider before you get into the real estate investment game? There's a number of things that you want to study, you want to learn about before you start investing. Um, number one thing you want, or one of the things you want to look at is property cycles. Now, what are property cycles? Well, prices for real estate go up and then they come down and then they go up and then they come down. And a property cycle in this part of the world generally lasts about five to seven yeah. years. We've gone through a number of them. Uh, since we started teaching people how to real how to invest in real estate, and what we like about the property cycles here in Calgary in particular is that up and down motion. It's up and down, yes, but there's a gradual increase along the way. So even though you get like downturns in the market, the trend is always upward. And you can see in this slide the graph there. That's the trend in Calgary. And it has been probably for the last 70 years. Yeah, I just got our book here, Fearless Real Estate. Tim and I wrote this during COVID. And it's got actually one of the one of the stories in here, 66 Hayes Drive Southwest, must be in Hayesboro. Yeah. Uh, this property, just so you guys can see what property cycles are all about. In 1994, it was sold for 100000 um, and then in 2002, 170,000, 2006, 328,000, 2012, 445,000, 2019, 467. Today, Tim, it looks like it's been renovated. It's probably 575. 575. Yeah. So as you can see, property cycles is huge. And you have to understand that the market does go up and down. It doesn't matter which market you're in. You may have been living in Toronto for the last 20 years. And guess what? They just had a dip. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Did they have a very good run? It can never last forever. We have to stress it. Doesn't matter where you are. I've got property in Sydney, Australia. I know last year it's gone down. Guess what they're doing there now? They're letting, they're doing what they're doing in Canada. They're letting more migration, uh, net migration into the country. And, and guess what? There's not enough properties for them. 
So their market's going up again, and there's a shortage of rental property. So people are stressed. The, every, um, every city is different. If you live in Winnipeg, you have to understand that their property cycles, it's pretty flat. Like yeah. it doesn't go even, but even their market has gone up. And if you were investing in Winnipeg, you'd be investing for cash flow because their rents are quite good there. Um, so you need to understand where you are. And then in regards to property cycles, you have to understand what the economy is doing for different segments of the market to actually um, take off. We know right now that the upper end, a million plus, interest rates are very high. When you go above a million dollars, you need you need more of a deposit to put down. So that will slow down that market. We know that rents are up right now. So if rents are up, we know that if someone's paying $2,000 a month for rent, right, or living in a basement suite for $1,500, that, that's the going rents right now. And that's probably on the cheap side. We know people get pretty upset. And we know people in Calgary, Tim, are pretty, they got good jobs here. Yeah. And they can afford to buy their buy a home. And we know that if they're paying that much in rent, that they can find similar properties, maybe a little bit more than what they're paying rent. And guess what? Now they own it and they're paying down a mortgage. So all these things affect property cycles. And you have to understand where we're at, which segment of the market is getting affected by that property cycle. And then what is the next segment that's going to take off? And, and the segments can be all different. It could be areas it could be spillover suburbs um we know that for example tim we know boness is going crazy right now why is boness going crazy because it's 12 minutes from downtown boness back in the day i used to get in trouble tim we've been doing these seminars for 15 16 long years time, yeah. long time and I, I i remember in one seminar i said boness had a lot of riffraff in there and geez did i get an email the next day from someone who lived in boness but you know what Bonus has turned around. There's a lot of infrastructure that's gone in there. There's a new superstore. There's new roads. Um, you know, the, the number one highway got through there. Now it's fully, it's going to be opened up yeah. to Stony Trail. So you can get anywhere in the city. So you have to look at all of these other factors with property cycles. Yeah, so that's property cycles. The next thing we talk about is the right real estate investment strategy. Um, so... If you want to be a successful real estate investor, you need to choose the strategy that's right for you. If you're someone who can't swing a hammer, doesn't know anything about building materials, doesn't know anything about building or renovating, maybe flipping is not the strategy for you. So you have to pick the right strategy that's right for you. And we've got all kinds of clients that sort of stay within their lane, right? We've got the flippers that, that are clients of ours they either bring something to the table or they know a heck of a lot about building. Um, so, you know, they usually, one of them is a tradesperson. He can do, say, he's an electrician. He can trade off his labor for, for a plumber, right? Yeah. If he needs plumbing done in the house. Um, they stay within their lane. Also, if you're doing one of the alternative investment strategies, like rent to own or lease options or wholesaling or Airbnbs, you need to be able to know have a knowledge of that area and sort of stick within it. What we see some people fail in real estate investing is when they try to do every single one of these. There's a ton of strategies on here. And when somebody's trying to do every single strategy, they usually can't devote 100% of their energy to all of them. So they're all kind of mediocre at what they do. Yeah, so there's factors. When we, when we first meet a client, we sit down and we actually work out the strategy, right? And there's factors that come into play. Like, if you have three kids and a full-time job, doing a flip and borrowing hard money is not a good idea, okay? But doing a flip and maybe um, taking your time and moving into a property, by moving into it, you don't pay capital gains because you've actually moved into it. You take your time. You may put a basement suite downstairs. You may legalize the basement suite. You may just do renos, right? But then there's no stress on the family. There's no stress on your lifestyle. That's, that is what we work out with our clients. We get people come in here that read books and online and, and we just set it straight. If you come in here and you don't have a job or you don't have good credit, then we know we have to go to alternative real estate investing. And that may look like 
lease options or Airbnb arbitrage or um, agreements for sale. There's many things you can do wholesaling. There's many things you can do if you don't have the ability to get a mortgage or um, if you don't have a lot of cash right now. There's many things you can do to get ahead and get into this game. We've seen people get into this game full time, um, but it really comes into play um, on your situation. Yeah, and choosing the right strategy for you is it also depends on your experience as well. Um, if you want to get into commercial real estate investing, we suggest maybe having a little bit of experience in residential real estate investing first mm -hmm. because it's a smaller scale. Mm -hmm. You're you're dealing with the lower number of units. You might even be dealing with just one unit, one rental property. Once you have experience in that, then you can move into multiple doors, small apartment buildings, small multifamily, large apartment buildings, and then commercial. If you take it out of turn and you start very, very big and you have no experience in that space, then you're not likely to have the success you would if you built up your experience. And it goes, it goes back to that old saying, it's time in the market, not timing the market. So you need to be in the market for a long time to make that wealth, to be very successful as a real estate investor and choosing the right strategy for your experience level is the number one thing. Yeah, I mean, some of these things, Tim, just quickly foreclosures, First of all, they're, they're really hard to come by. Yeah. And we, we were hoping, we're not hoping, we we thought that um, after COVID, there would have been more foreclosures, but there aren't. They're just, they're just not. No, and, and one of the reasons for that is the banking standards. Ever since they brought in the stress test and banking standards really tightened up after the financial crisis in 2008, um, it's very, very hard, harder to qualify for a mortgage than it was pre-real uh, pre estate crash. So the banks are protecting themselves, but they're also protecting us and other purchasers in that we, you know, you have to have stronger income, stronger credit. And so that means there's less chance of you defaulting on a loan. Now, with all of these strategies, one thing we could definitely tell you what real estate's all about. It's all about rotating the funds that you're using, putting it into a property, adding value, getting back out. And sometimes, Tim, you don't even have to add value. Sometimes the market adds value for you. And that's the benefit of what Calgary is going through right now. And you do go through, and that's why the slide previous to these property cycles, sometimes, Tim, the market's just going to soften up and you'll be you know, at a standstill for a while because of market conditions. So normally, the people that are investing full-time, they've got parallel strategies going on. They've got some buy and hold properties. They may have some flipping properties and it may not just be, you know, a quick flip using hard money. It may be just a property that they know that when the market shifts a little bit, um, they're going to they're gonna actually pull off another renovation, add more value, then maybe refinance that money back out so they can go again. And when we really think about our clients, Tim, we our aim is to get them three minimum properties. We're not talking 50, 60 houses here. I know there's a lot of smoke out there about you know people owning yeah. all these houses. There are there are investors out there that do own that many doors. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. There are that yeah. there are those people out there. Odds are it's not going to be every single person in our group. Yeah, our our main aim if, if people are working with us is to get them to a million dollars worth of equity. It's a system that we've kind of worked out and put a whole, whole you know, um, guideline in place to get there. And it, it takes time. When I say it takes time, we had one fellow who we're going to talk about tonight, which we'll all wait for a time yeah, okay. story. Yeah, because that's another one. Okay. Okay. So those are the different strategies. And the main thing we want to zero in on is pick the strategy that's right for you. That's that you can be a success at. And it might be more than one. It might be one, two, three different strategies. But the odds are, like I said before, of someone doing every single one of those strategies are pretty, pretty slim. So moving on, the next thing that we focus in on to ensure that you're a successful real estate investor is property analysis. You need to analyze, like I said before, you need to analyze before you purchase anything. Mm -hmm. Now, that could be, say you're going into buying a, a suite of property, just a suite of bungalow in Acadia. You need to analyze what the rents are for that neighborhood, what the costs are in 
uh, in the house, like so what the utilities are, what the taxes are, what the insurance will be, and you need to factor in what your mortgage amount is going to be. You need to analyze every single one of your numbers. You don't have to analyze it like an engineer. Unless you're an engineer, we have engineering clients that analyze our analysis after we give it to them. But analyzing the financials on each property is probably the thing that's going to make you the most successful. Yeah, and the big thing with that is you've got to compare apples to apples. I mean, if you're comparing a property in a cul-de-sac to one on the drive, you have to compare the level of renovations in each property, the quality. And we always say this, Tim, we were in Bonus the other day, um, Cole's property was just nice and big and bright. Yeah. And you know what? People would want to live in it. So if you've got like a, a dark dungeon kind of a basement, well, you're probably not going to get max rents on it. So you have to understand that. And we want to stress that it's very, very important to compare apples to apples and take an average. We like to take team actually worst case numbers. Yeah. So when we run our analysis, Tim's just showing that we're up about seven, eight percent this month in growth, but we would still run our numbers at three and a half percent. It doesn't matter if it's on a townhouse that's gone up sixty thousand dollars this year. When we're running our numbers, it's always at three and a half percent because that is our worst case number. That is the seventy five year average in Calgary. And the funny thing is about the seventy five year average is that you run a four hundred thousand dollar property at three and a half percent. It's worth a million bucks in 25 years time. Yeah. And with that, that no matter which market you're in, you could be in Calgary, you could be in Edmonton, you could be in a market in the United States, a big city down there. You need to go and dig out and find the information, find the stats on that property, find out what their average price growth is over a long, long period of time and use that for your analysis. We have run into clients and they've been going to different investment groups we had an investment group that was mm. quoting 8% as the average growth in Calgary. And that's what they were using for their analysis. Now we may have had boom years where we did have an 8% increase and we have had those, but that's not the norm. That the norm is three and a half percent. It's statistically proven. We've got the stats for it. So no matter what market you're in, you need to research what that growth will be mm -hmm. and use that number in your analysis. Yeah. And one thing that's happening in Calgary is the builders are offering team rental, um, guarantees. rental guarantees. And you have to be careful with rental guarantees because, yeah, they'll guarantee that rent for two years, which you're normally paying for in your purchase price anyway. So you're just paying for that up front, which is fine. If people yeah. want a new product, I'm fine with that. But we know as soon as the market shifts, and Calgary is an up and down market, we're going to be honest with everybody. If you've lived here for the last 15 years, you'll know that we had a good year in 2014. We had some great years in 2006, seven, and then eight. It kind of went sideways. And then in 2009, we had the world financial crust. So anyway, and then before that, Tim, we had a steady time in Calgary. Well, there was the, the dot-com bubble, early 2000s, things like that. And if you go back to the 90s, where it was super high, or late 80s, early 90s, where it was super, super high interest rates, I don't know how many investors can go yeah. back that far. But, yeah. you know, we've had this cyclical thing where yeah. there's great years and there's not so great years. And so where we're a little different than other investment groups, they'll hype you up. They'll tell you to use the 8%. We're going to be safe. We're going to tell you what we think is comfortable. And even on our worst case numbers, you're going to do better than what we're expecting. And we love that because yeah. our clients get better rents, they get better appreciation, and they make more money. But what we're getting at with new builds is as soon as the market turns a little bit, those properties, they go down in value because builders have to offload the new, the new developments that are coming on. They have to sell. So they're going to lower their prices. As soon as they lower their prices, your property goes down in value. We've seen this in Auburn Bay. We've seen it in Mahogany. And guess what? Now the market's back up. Uh, even in Redstone in the Northeast and areas like that, down south on the other side in Walden, prices are good. But you just have to make sure that the, the Tim, the, what do you say, the infrastructure is built around there. For or at least plan. Or plan, right. yeah. For years, we stayed away from... Um, from deep, deep down south until the hospital was built. And then as soon as that hospital was built, guess what? We started buying. Yeah, because all the schools went in, all the supporting office, little office towers went in for, for medical services. All the little strip malls went in. The shopping went in. They've got a rec center in there and library and stuff like that. So after that came in, 
then, like, as I said, jump on it. That's the time to get in. Yeah. So we just want to stress that with rental guarantees. And you know what? Someone asked us yesterday, will rent soften? We don't see them softening anytime soon, but have they softened before? Definitely. Yeah. Okay. So even with interest rates where they're at, we have to make sure that we're cash flowing. That is key, but you can't have analysis paralysis. We tell this to all of our engineers. And, and we love it because we'll give, when we buy a property, we're doing like a 22 page analysis on the properties we buy for our clients. And then the engineers of, of uh, investors are analyzing our analysis over their analysis. So we love it because they still end up buying with yeah. us anyway. So that, that is great. But when we say you can't overanalyze, yes, you can factor in a vacancy, but we have to be honest with you. Every property we choose for our clients has zero vacancy. It's because we know what we're doing. We know how to choose the right properties. And we know we're going to have a lineup of tenants. Do we still factor in, Tim, I think you factor in two months over two years or something. Yeah, that's month. whenever I do an analysis, it's two months vacancy or one month vacancy over two years. That's what I build into every one of my analysis. Because in those two years, you may have a tenant changeover. You want to, might want to keep that property vacant so you can spruce it up, put some new flooring and paint it, whatever. So that'll be your one month vacancy over those two years. Yeah, and then maintenance. We always see people have crazy amounts of maintenance in there. You know what? When you buy a property, you do a home inspection. And if you do a home inspection and things come up, you fix those things. That should be part of your purchase. If you need mortgage plus improvements, you should get it or you should be buying a turnkey property. We do not want you guys dumping your money into these properties simply because we want you saving more money to buy your next property, okay? Yeah. So you shouldn't be spending a lot of money and Really, with the cash flow, the cash flow is not going to make you rich. We want to be honest about that. We get people coming here all the time. Yes, in 10, 15 years' time, that's when we see people living off their cash flow. But in the first five years, where you're making the money is in that spread. The spread from equity, uh, what your property is worth and what your mortgage is, that's called equity in the middle. And that's where you get to use those funds and go again. So we want to stress that don't overanalyze. And if you don't take action, you don't stand in the way of making that equity. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The next thing that we're going to talk about here is managing your portfolio successfully. Now this, this comes in two parts. The first part is property management where you're managing the individual properties. Now, whether you're managing it yourself or whether you have a property okay. manager doing it, that's fine. But the first part is managing the properties. And the second part is managing your portfolio. We'll get into that about you may have to redistribute that portfolio. Yeah. So managing the property successfully is when any one of our clients buys a property, we go through our landlord training. There's a picture of our landlord kit right there, which we give to um, people who buy. It's got everything in it. It's got the interview questions you're going to ask potential tenants. It's got all the forms you'll need. It's got the leases, the move in, move out forms. Everything you need to be a successful landlord is in there. And we go through the training with you to make sure that you're successful. Yeah. And we teach our investors to love tenants. We're in the people business. Tim says that all the time. And you know what? These people, you need them to look after your properties. You need them to pay rent. It's a business. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's part of it, right? And if you do it right, if you do the pre-screening up front and you select the right tenant, Guess what? The work you do, I, I don't even talk to my tenants. Like, I don't, and if I do, it's a few texts here and there. And, and the only time it's going to, that property's going to take my time up is when I have to re rent it. And I enjoy that anyway. So, you know, at the end of the day, we even have um, our secrets on how we do open houses where we're not going to the property to show it all the time. We, we will tell everyone, yep, I'm going to be down there at 3 p.m. on a Saturday. 15 people come along, check it out. We already pre-screened before they even get there. So we know who we're going to rent to most likely before we even meet them, okay? So it's all about just choosing people that you want to work with and that are going to look after your property at the end of the day and pay you on time. Yeah, and the second part is managing your full portfolio. Now, what do we mean by that is you have to look at your whole portfolio as, as a unit. So if you have you know four or five rental properties in your portfolio, are they all performing the way you want them to perform? Or is one of them really, really doing some subpar performance? It's never cash flowed. It's always has problems. 
there's always, you know, maintenance on it that, you know, the roof goes and then the hot water tank goes and then the washing machine goes and then the stove goes. Mm -hmm. If you have a property like that, you know, we never want people to sell, but if it's becoming a drain on your cash flow, so much so, you may have to wait till a market like the we have right now mm -hmm. where it's time to sell a problem property. Yeah. And you know what? I used to feel bad back in the day, Tim. We had offload properties. Tim yeah. and I owned over 25 houses and we got caught out. And we simply got caught out because we bought too many too quickly. And some of them had bad tenants. Yeah. We didn't know what to do with the tenants in the early days. Right. So we got caught out. And guess what? You know, interest rates went, went up. Yeah. So we had to offload and when I had to offload to him, I was feeling bad. I remember one property I owned, it was in Noosa in Australia. I was living in Calgary, but I was back there on holidays and I bought it on, on a weekend. I was there and I could have just fell in love with this. Noosa is like your Kelowna of, of Australia. People go on holidays there, bought this beautiful townhouse with tennis court, swimming pool, five minutes from the beach. And in that down, one of the downturns, I had to sell it just because it had a lot of equity in it. And I felt bad, but you know, a week later, I had all this money in my bank account, all the bills were paid, and life goes on. So you can't feel bad. You can't feel bad about you know reaching a peak and then rejuggling to keep going. Yeah, you, you got to understand that you know cities change, neighborhoods change, uh, demographics change. So property that you hit a home run on to begin with things may change around it that are beyond your control. You may have the best maintained house with the best tenants in it, but if the neighborhood changes around it, sometimes you don't have any control over that. And you may have to re, we call it redistribution of your portfolio where you may sell that one, but the proceeds go to buy property in a better area or a better property. Yeah, and, and one last thing to add to this, looking up to your portfolio, some properties peak, so they peak in value. And they're at the top of their value that's going to sit there for a number yeah. of years. So you could pull that money out and put it into another asset class to actually perform even better. So we want to stress that. And you may be sitting there thinking, well, where is Calgary in all of this? The average today was 550, somewhere around there. We believe for the longest time, we've got videos going back five, six years showcasing us saying the average of Calgary's um, detached homes should be around 650. So we're nowhere near where we're thinking. With detached, we are. That's the average of every housing. Oh, that's everything. Yeah. So with detached homes, I believe we're almost at 700 now. That's for this year. Um, but we thought the whole market itself should be 650 because yeah. when you're looking at the market as a whole, and we're not there yet. Yeah. We're 550. But when we started predicting that, we were at 400 and we were so far behind the bigger markets, Toronto and Vancouver, that it was inevitable that Calgary is going to get up to at least 50% of their average price. Yeah. And in historic uh, data yeah. actually shows that. So that's why we believe we think um, we're in a great place. And, and if you're in a different city and you're watching tonight, you have to work out where you're at and work out where your market's going as well. Yeah. So what we want to do now is the whole point of this seminar is how to, how you can change your life with real estate investing. We're going to showcase a ton of clients. We love this because we get to tell their success stories. And we're going to showcase the different strategies that they use and how each strategy changes different people's lives. And we can even quote the numbers that they've made. But to get to kick this off, um, we're just going to take house hacking. That's the first example we're going to use. And we're going to showcase these clients that have had huge success house hacking and how it's changed their lives. Yeah, so we're, we're, we love this because here we get to speak about the success of our clients. And you know what? They've followed they've, they've followed our guidance and they're killing it. And, and it's great because you can see what they're doing and see if it's for you. So if you have any questions at all, just put it in the chat, we'll get to it. But house hacking is simply when you're living in, say, a property and you're renting out the basement suite, or it could be a garage suite, or it could be a garden suite. Um, you're renting out a portion of the house. And Tim, I guess student rentals could fall into that too, if you really want. Yeah. Because we, we've got some people doing that. But the first guy we want to talk about is Steve Lenevu on the left top corner in the black shirt. Steve, and, and we could tell you the actual stories. Steve is a fireman. He's been a fireman for many Whoa. years. You know, Tim's going too fast. Um, Steve's a fireman and we bought him this property. He came from Okotoks. He owned a little, this is one of those properties, Tim in Okotoks. It was in the older part of Okotoks and it probably hit the peak of what that property was going to yeah. be worth 
for a number of years at that time. And you sold his that house in Okotoks and we bought him a place in Fairview. And this is, it's a split level. It's a split level, but it's sweet. <laughs> he bought a suite of property to begin with. So what he did is he renovated the whole thing to before he even moved into it. And the thing is, is he could do a lot of stuff. He was an electrician by trade, even though he's a fireman now. But yeah. he had had a lot of experience in, in other kind of things like doing baseboards and painting and hanging doors and stuff like that. So he knew what he was doing. Yeah, he went to town on this. We picked he bought it for him for about 400000 yeah. I think it was actually three ninety. dollars Tim, he bought it for him. And so 390000 he did a full reno upstairs and down. When we went to see him, he was getting such ridiculous rents at the time. This is like a couple of years ago. He's getting fourteen hundred back then. Now rents for that same property would be over fifteen hundred. Yeah, that's the basement suite. That yeah, the basement suite. Sorry, he lives upstairs, and um, and so he's renovated the whole property. And we're also seeing so he bought for um, three ninety, and the renovations would be around eighty thousand because he yeah. did a lot of the work himself. And right now we've actually seen flips in Fairview and the neighboring community. And the reason why we bought in Fairview is because the neighboring community is Acadia. On the other side of Elbow is Haysboro. And Haysboro already has sales upwards of 900,000 for renovated. Acadia, we've seen in there up to 800. Yeah. Too. And now Fairview is definitely in the six, 700 range for a house like this. So for a young fireman who just got married, that's what he's gone and done. So he's earning fourteen. He was earning fourteen hundred dollars downstairs, and his upstairs rent team at the time, well, not rent, his taxes, insurance, mortgage would have been roughly six hundred bucks. Yeah. So he's living for six hundred dollars, um, making all of this cash flow in the basement. So that's changing his life right now. He's now talking about moving to an acreage outside of the city. Uh, he recently got married. Yeah. He wants to move to an acreage. So he's going to use that house in Fairview as a stepping stone to get there long before he would have if he was just earning a firefighter's wage. Yeah, that's that's perfect. And here's a guy who didn't go out and buy multiple properties. Yeah, He stuck with one. He renovated it. He got the cash downstairs, which helped him pay down his mortgage. And now, Tim, I doubt there's much of a mortgage on that property. No. And he'll have a massive deposit to go buy an acreage and do it all over again. Yeah. And that would be his family home. Okay, the next guy to go for that is, went too fast again, is uh, Adam. Adam's right here, standing on the deck of one of his properties. Yeah. This was a half duplex in Malin Heights, suited up down. Um, he uses that as Airbnb now. So he Airbnb's the top and the bottom. He went on to, he actually lived in that house for a little while. And then he bought a house in Haysboro. Yep, Kingsland. Yeah, Kingsland. No, his, it was his, his bro. And we went and looked at it and appraised it for him about four months ago. Um, he's living upstairs. He's doing Airbnb in the basement in that one as well. Mm -hmm. So he's house hacked twice. His portfolio is probably $800,000 worth of real estate right now. Maybe and more, yeah. yeah, and it's changed his life to the positive, a hugely positive way. Yeah, and one thing about this property, you can see he's on his deck. It overlooks the city. Um, we picked this up for right around the 400 range again. And you might be wondering, okay, they're all around the 400. It's because rents, you have to calculate what rents can cover, yeah. right? So um, this property here, what's unique about it, the downstairs, which is the basement, is on main floor. Yeah. And you come across these properties. So when you have a main floor basement suite, you really can rent it as a main floor. So he was getting exceptional rents, above average rents for a basement because it was a main floor and then even better rents upstairs because it had the city views. And now he's, yeah, now he's in the Airbnb. Yeah, and so, okay, the next one to the right is Cynthia. Cynthia bought a house in Thorncliffe. Thorncliffe. It was fully renovated. She actually paid, we thought it was a premium price yeah, at the time. Because it's fully renovated. 425, we thought it was a premium yeah. price. That same property would sell for probably 650 right now. Mm -hmm. Um, but she wanted a little uh, mortgage helper when she moved in, so she rented out the basement. Yeah, she was a renter before. Yeah. These two people were renters anyway, yeah. but yeah, she was a renter before, and um, her dad helped her out with the deposit, yeah. and she was nervous, and we still get phone calls from Cynthia, but she lives in a fully renovated house in Thorncliffe that we bought for 425 It's stunning. And um, and now it's worth six hundred thousand. She hasn't gone on to buy anything else, but you know she's got a full time job. She's got a mortgage helper downstairs, and you know what? She's in a position to do whatever she wants to do. 
Yeah, and the, okay, the next one on the right, so upper right-hand corner, this is Connor. He's on his second house hacking house right now. Um, we think he's going to be the mayor of Ogden. Both of them are in Ogden right now. Yeah. He wants to buy a third, um, but he's a young kid and he likes to go out a lot. So yes, try to track him down to get him to buy a third. That'll be tough for us. So he's a kid that moved out of home, fresh, into his first place. He actually moved into the basement suite and rented out upstairs. And when he rented out upstairs, it covered all his costs. So if you've seen the video on our YouTube channel, he's the kid that was living for free. And because he lived for free, he saved all his money. And Tim, how long did it take between the two properties? Well, he bought the first one for three twenty, dollars yeah. And he put 20% down on that because he didn't want a large mortgage payment. So that left him free to put 5% down on the second property. He put 5% down on the second property. So he didn't have to save that much of a down payment. Oh, he bought right. the second one for 450 because it already had a legal suite in the basement. Yeah. Oh, and he did legalize the first one as well. Yeah, he went through the whole process, legalized the first one. The first one he bought for 320 yeah. and now Tim 460. Yeah. Right around there. So we're talking within two and a half years. Right two now. and a half years, yeah. So two and a half years, he went from buying it for, and he did put a little bit of money for the Renos, but not nothing crazy. No, he painted, did the baseboards, put in some vinyl plank, and that was about it. So he's made over 100000 on the first one. And the second one right now, Tim, you can't find a legally suited big bungalow like the second one he has. It fronts onto a park. With a big garage out back. Big garage. We can't find anything. We can't find a legal suite of property under 600000 yeah. in the city with those same specs. So he's done extremely well on the second one as well. Okay, so moving on to bottom left-hand corner, here's another corner. Uh, it seems to be a popular name amongst these house hackers. He bought a place in Westgate. No. No, nah, it's near my Glamorgan. Glamorgan. Yeah. Glamorgan. So he bought a half duplex legally suited in Glamorgan. He lives in the top. He rents out the basement. Um, he's looking to do another one soon. But similar thing, he bought it. Yeah. Actually, he paid a four twenty five four twenty five for that yeah. one. Now in Glen in Glamorgan, you can't buy a suited half duplex for under five seventy. Yeah, this one comes with a garage. It came with a tenant when we bought it. He's just a young kid getting into his first property and saving up for his next one. So house hacking can really, really change your life. Um, Cole and Tasha are the next couple here. Right there. Tim bought them that property too. At the um, Canyon Meadows. Canyon Meadows. And you know what? What did you pay for that? Because we have a single car garage, walking distance to Sea Train, South Center Mall. Um, 390? Three, yeah, 390. Right now they're selling uh, closer to 500,000 yeah. so with the garage. They moved into the basement suite, renovated the downstairs because the upstairs was already done. Yeah. And once again, they were living very cheaply, like for $400 a month. So house hacking can definitely change your life. It can make it more affordable. And if you're focused like these guys, Cole and Tasha just went and bought another one. We did the video on the weekend with them in Burness, and they paid $390 for that one in, in Burness. Yeah. Uh, no garage. And that one's gone up $100,000 in Burness in the last six months. So their first two properties, they've gone from renting in a basement suite to owning um, the first one in Candy Meadows, the second one in Bonest Tim, they've gone and moved upstairs because Tasha was sick of living in a basement suite. And guess what? Within the next, they're already talking about the end of the year, yeah. because they've got two legal suite of properties now, they went through the process with the first one. They're on their way now to doing another property um, within the next six months. So. Um, hats off to them. Yeah. So the next guy here, Lewis. Uh, Lewis bought a half duplex in Queensland. Queensland. Uh, Lewis is quite a character. He's a funny, funny guy. Yeah. Anyways, I think his his video on our YouTube channel is uh, house hacking in Technicolor. Yeah. Because the the upstairs suite that he bought in Queensland was painted a funky blue and red and green. Like Calypso, like Calypso colors. Yeah, each wall was a different color. And you know what? He bought. The cheapest property in Ogden, one of the cheapest here. Yeah. Like he bought for three towns and being ridiculous. And so came with a beautiful suite. And we don't think Lewis really cares what he does because he loves what we do, but he's a guy who took action, but he doesn't really want to go and buy many, many properties. We don't even know if we can get him to move out of this one. That's how happy he is. Yeah. You can see how happy he is in the picture. We told him he had to paint the house. He still, has, I'm sure he still hasn't painted no. it. 
So, <laughs> but he did finally get a basement tenant. He did get a tenant. Yeah. Okay, you got a tenant. And Lewis, he bought for three ten, and that property in Queensland right now, we can't find half duplexes under four fifty. So he's made just by simply taking action, following our steps, and we really had to encourage him that we we're like, nah, Lewis, we'll make the right decision for you. He took action, and now he's probably got one hundred and twenty thousand in equity. Yeah. Okay. The last guy for house hacking over here is John. John bought a full, a fully legalized suite of property in Canyon Meadows. It was a beautiful house, or it is a beautiful house. Very, very big. I think it's a 1,500 square foot bungalow. It's got a two and a half, well, two bedrooms and a den suite in the basement. He moved in upstairs. He was renting downstairs. He re-rented it for, I think, $1,500 a month. And he's on to his second property now. We're going to close on it in just a few days. It's a suite of property in Fairview. So like Steve's there, it's a really, really great property. It's got tenants in it. Um, beautiful house up and down mm -hmm. and it's got a garage out back. So he's going to, I don't know if he's going to move into this one, yeah. but he's going to have two legally suited properties. And $1.1 million worth of real estate. $1.1 million worth of real estate. Young guy. Got a girlfriend now, um, was working in San Francisco. He met us online, came in for a meeting. We didn't know, we didn't know what John was gonna do because he's coming back from the States and this phone number would always yeah. ring. We would we get phone calls from all over, so we don't really normally take phone calls that we don't know. But anyway, he finally got a hold of us and now he owns 1.1 um worth of real estate. And you know what? He's Tim, he's gonna have two legal suited properties and really makes good income, made smart decisions, yeah. and just can keep building. He's a guy that will surprise us and end up owning a bunch of real estate at the end of the day. Yeah, so we'll move on. So what else can change your life in real estate? Well, flipping can. Now, flipping's not for everybody, but for the people that it is, they can make huge profits on flipping. Uh, this top couple here standing here with Azad in this partially renovated house is Jeff and Susan. They actually partnered with Ryan, who's in the top, uh, right corner. top right corner here, to renovate a house in Haysboro, and they had huge success with it. Yes, that. I can tell you the story there. They're actual members of our group. Uh, this property, we actually gave them an off-market property um, that they did very well off. Uh, Ryan joined as a member, had a lot of cash. We actually took $80,000 of Ryan, JV with Sue and Jeff, to renovate this property, another one in Haysboro. Um, the numbers were something like 525 purchase. I think it was 520 purchase, and it was roughly about 820, $820,000 sale price after the reno. They did use hard money, so all the factors came into play here. They used Calvert for hard money lending. Um, it was a joint venture, and Ryan um, bought $80,000 to the table and helped them qualify for this project. So the project team only went for about six, seven months. We timed it over the winter. So as soon as spring hit, we listed it and it sold straight away. Um, and so one thing about this deal though, we could tell you Sue and Jeff are professional uh, flippers. Yeah. They come from um, our American um, investment group down there, Bigger Pockets. They found us on there and wanted to connect with us, seeing what we're doing. And you know what? They're pros at it. So we need to stress that. It was one of those projects, when you do use hard money, you have to get going with your timing. And um, and it turned out really, really good. We actually do a walkthrough on the property so you can see, and we run through the numbers on our YouTube channel so you can see what they're doing. But these next people, we'll go with um, Melissa and Kevin down the bottom on the motorbike. This is the first uh, flip that they did. These guys, we love them. They uh, met us online as well. And the difference between using us to buy a property to flip is that we're taking all of the speculation out. We're running all of the numbers. We're setting the budget on your renovation. We're telling you the end price. And we're telling you how much money you're going to put in your bank account at the end of the day. So that whole stressful part, is it going to work? Is it going to work? Is it going to work? We take all of that on and our clients listen to us. Yeah. And the numbers on this one is they bought it for 520. Yeah. It's a buy level in Lake Bonavista. 
they renovated it and they ended up turning it around for 820. Yeah. So they their budget was I think $100,000. They went over and they were super super worried that they went over. I think they did 120. Yeah. And they thought it was going to sell around the high 7 or high mid 7, sorry. So they were worried about their profit. Mm -hmm. When they we ended up getting them a price of 820 for it. Mm -hmm. That just blew them out of the water. Yeah, yeah. And that led them on to their next project, which came positions coming up in a couple of days here. No, it's August. End of, yeah, August, August. 1st. So we just sold their property in Willow Park. After this one, we went and bought them in Willow Park. What did you buy for in Willow Park? That one, again, bought for five twenty. Yeah. And they only put 70000 into it. So yeah. they're, they're all in costs were under 600000 and we just recently sold it for five forty or eight forty three. Eight forty three. Oh, you yeah. just took two thousand off. Yeah. Sold for eight forty five, and they came back. And you know what? They only spent seventy thousand in renos, so they didn't do. They didn't. Go, you know, they didn't do like they didn't do everything. Yeah, we'll just say that they didn't do everything. So a couple of things came up in the home inspection, but there's people lined up to buy this thing. Sold for eight forty three, and they bought for five twenty. Spent seventy on it. Huge, huge profit there. And now... Yes. So that's two renos over $400,000 in profit. Of course, that's changed their life. Yeah, and now they've gone into a community that they've always wanted to be in. Parkland. So, well, how much yes, so they bought another one in Parkland. I think it was five fifty, but it's this massive bungalow, grandma's bungalow. And they're going to do it again with that one. On one of the best streets yeah. in, in Parkland. So, um, you know, these things do take time. Uh, you know, and, and if you do it right... And one thing we have to talk about the flipping is that we go in there and we we tell you what has to be done, yeah. what walls have to be opened up. Like right in the middle here with the big, what do you call those big saws? Circular saw. Circular saw. I'm not a handyman at all. You can tell I'm not flipping houses. But Brad here, we bought this property in Silver Springs. Um, you can actually see the end result with on the left here with the pubbins who bought it. And we just wanted to throw this in there because... We went in there. This was grandma's house. Yeah. But you need that wow factor when you're choosing a property to flip. This property, Tim, it was siding onto a golf course and a, an off-leash dog park. So people were walking past there every day. Guess what? The pubbins were walking their dog past there every yeah. day. And that's who bought this property. And this was a record sale when we sold it. We bought for five fifty, dollars which was, which was high, but... But it was the neighborhood that they bought yeah, into. and the view as well. Yeah. <laughs> but this property, what we had to do, if someone was buying a property over 800000 we needed to add in an ensuite. So that's what you're competing against. So you need to add some features like an ensuite. I mean, they opened up walls, Tim. Um, beautiful kitchen in there. Uh, put it another two bedrooms downstairs. So... Um, but when you add in the ensuite, we had to find a bungalow that was over 1,250 square feet. So it had enough room in the master bedroom to add an ensuite. And somehow they managed to keep the room in between the master bedroom and the and the third bedroom. But they just took out a closet from there. They used part of the closet in the master bedroom to add an ensuite. And it was a walkthrough kind of ensuite with a walk-in closet. And you know what? It achieved amazing results in yeah. Silver Springs. Okay, the next one, change your life with buy and hold. Um, this is probably the number one strategy that most of our clients use, buy and hold. It's the one that's going to build your wealth the most over time. Um, so we're going to showcase a few clients here. Uh, we've got the three, the three gentlemen up here in the top left. We've got Momodu, Tim, and Rumi. And those guys joint ventured on this property, which was a suite of property in Deer Ridge. Uh, it's going, it's a very, very successful rental, but they also <laughs> teamed up with a whole bunch of their friends yeah. and they've bought real estate all they're, over the city. I can tell they own in Thorncliff, they own in Huntington Hills, they own in, this one's in Deer Ridge, Deer, right, Deer Ridge. Yeah. they own in Minipore and they own in Tuscany. Yeah. So they own <laughs> everywhere and good for them. They got it, they understood it and guess what? Um, each property now, Tim, on each single property has gone up $100,000. And we were a little wary, Tim, when they were getting together because we're like, we love doing joint ventures when it's 50-50. Yeah. And the reason why we're a little bit on the edge with a three-way split is because it dilutes um, your profit yeah. at the end of the day. But guess what? It dilutes your risk as well. So I love that. And you have three people looking after the property. So that's easier as well. And what I loved about what they did is that they diversified all over the city. Yeah. 
And so, you know, they've all gone up. They're all legally suited properties and they're doing extremely, extremely well. And they're guys that are new to Canada. We could tell you the guy in the middle, he came here and he, he could actually afford a million dollar property. And we said, no, don't do that. Actually, he owns in Silver Springs too, because his first town house we bought him. We said, don't go buy the big house now. Go buy a little a townhouse in Silver Springs, which we did. Um, actually, the couple on the previous slide that he bought that flip, we sold their townhouse off market to Momoto, um, just, just so um, he didn't have to compete with anyone getting it. So he got an off-market property. Those other people got an off-market property. We put the whole deal together, and now he owns five, six properties and lives in his dream home down south. Yeah. So that's huge. Okay, go to Grant. Next, next below them is Grant and Norico. They are standing in front of their property in Huntington Hills. That was their yeah. second one, yeah. I believe. So their strategy yeah. was to buy good, solid, um, always rented out properties. And so far they've done it. Every property they have is rarely vacant. Uh, they were good solid properties, so they didn't require a lot of maintenance up front. They don't require a lot of maintenance ongoing. Um, they're they're just doing the, the slow and steady, build your wealth over time. Yeah, and we love it. They're on their third property. They have one in Brentwood, one in Royal Oak, and one in Huntington Hills. And they're all quality properties and they've all gone up. Tim, the Brentwood one, uh, who knows what that's worth? Could be over 200,000 what they paid for it. Royal Oak's gone up over a hundred thousand yeah. dollars on that one and this one as well so good solid just and we hate to tell you this we know you don't want to hear it but the buy and hold strategy is where you make the most wealth in real estate we need to be honest you set it you forget it you buy the right property you have a good team around you and and you have that support and you will get there yeah so the, the bottom left hand corner there uh elijah and his family this is a great story. What I love about this is they're standing in front of a house in Ogden that they bought. It's a suite of property. They actually have two rental properties. And why do they only have two rental properties? Because they only have two kids right now. Mm -hmm. They bought each rental property as, as, a, as a fund mm -hmm. for their girls' educations later on. So he wanted to buy a rental property for each girl so that when they get to college, they have enough equity in those properties to fund their college education. And we thought that was a brilliant idea because they're so young, the girls right now, that by the time they, they are going to university in you know 18 years, there will be 18 years worth of equity in that property. And we're estimating that'll be around you know four or five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. 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 Uh, next guy in the middle, Caden, when he came with this guy was so young, I didn't even know how he was going to get a mortgage, but he got out of university, got a job. His parents actually helped him co-sign. We bought in, him this massive bungalow in Okotoks and we had to go down there and interview people. We have an interview on our crew TV about how much rent you can get in Okotoks. We didn't even believe it's crazy, it. Crazy, yeah. It's crazy. So this guy, you know what? He bought it and uh, rented it out. He was cash flowing from day one. And he's so young that who knows what he's going to end up doing. But there you go. It's just a buy and hold strategy yeah. that's working for him. Top right hand corner here, Farhan and Farheed. They were a couple that came to us. They wanted us to buy them uh, a property that would just be a good solid rental property. We looked at a ton of properties. Um, they weren't afraid to go in the Northeast. Mm -hmm. So we bought them this property in Abbeydale. Abbeydale. Abbey, we had never bought a, anybody a property in Abbeydale ever. What we found out is, holy cow, is that a great place to buy a rental property? Yeah, safe, yeah. easy access. Now they've built all that shopping on um, what East, Hills. East Hills. So when we see infrastructure going in to you know, next door to a community, we're all over it. This property was renovated, turnkey, rented out even before they owned it. They used our strategy to do that. And it's been a success since day one. They're already wanting to buy the second property. So they just, they own their property they live in. They bought a rental property that's suited. And now they already want to go again. So you can see if you're doing it properly and you're working with the right people, you know, it's not a race. We want to stress that. Um, we took possession of a property today, team that needs major renovations. Yeah. It's not a race. Take your time, right? Uh, you'll eventually get there. Now, the last guy we want to stress this, this is Mustafa. Mustafa uh, bought a property uh, down in New Brighton. New Brighton. We bought it just last month. He, he got the keys, rented it out. And you know what? 
it's just a little townhouse that we picked up, I think for 315,000 and comparable properties, the reason why we jumped on it, comparable properties are selling around 360. Yeah, and the reason we got it so cheap is it was a rental property and the tenants were just a little messy. Yeah. It's not that the place was was destroyed or torn apart. They were just a little messy. And that was turning off some homeowners. Yeah. But Mustafa could see through that. And he knew when those tents were out and the place was cleaned up, it would be on par in value with the ones that are selling today. Yeah, so it's all about, and you know what? He rented it out for a crazy amount, like twenty-one fifty, covering all his costs. And now he's got a beautiful little rental that's, you know, very clean, tidy, good-looking townhouse um, that's just going to continue doing well for him. So... You can see all these people are buying different properties. There's no right or wrong. It's just making sure that the property is rentable and it's going to achieve uh, the rents that we set out for it to get, right? Okay, moving on. Changing your life with alternative investment strategies. These people in the slides here are all doing something different. Uh, it's not the normal buy and hold thing, but they're all having huge success. And you can bet it's changed in their life with the success that they're having. Up top left corner, we've talked about Graham quite a bit in our seminars. Uh, he came to us recently. He now owns, he's doing the BRR strategy on condos. Yeah, he just doing the book. Very good at it. He's done it three times now. He buys a condo, an original condo. He bought his first one for 190, had it, fixed it up, had it appraised. Now it's 270. Yeah. So he's currently on his third condo right now. He's having someone go in there and fix it up for him. And we believe he's going to appraise that one a good 70 or 80,000 above right. what, what he paid for it. Yeah. So he just continues to do the burr. He's living for free. All of that rental income uh, goes towards paying his mortgage. So he's living for free. And then he's just recycling his money in and out of properties. And, and he's doing it on condos. Yeah. Like it's brilliant. He's doing it in the same building. <laughs> we can't even believe it. Um, Below they're... him, John and Donna. So this is a couple, uh, they, their strategy is wholesaling. Mm -hmm. they, they were so into wholesaling, they did it all by the book. They did uh, a course on it. They did a course they did on it. Course. They, were, they were, had someone delivering flyers for them in all these neighborhoods to pick up these wholesaling properties. They actually got a few of them under contract. Mm -hmm. So they had some success at it. Um, and it changed their life in that it got... Donna interested in real estate and now she changed careers. She's a realtor now. Yeah, not with us. Yeah. But, but you know what? When they met us, we knew the whole thing was hard to do. They understood where we're coming from. And we said, you know what? You guys would be really good at taking on a project. So Tim, where did we buy this house? Oh yeah. So this is a house in Willow Park. They trying to, or they were going to flip that one. So they went in and they renovated it. Yeah. And they Literally. turned out to be really, really good renovators. They live there. And now we, I think we bought in the low 500s and it's probably worth low 800s yeah. so walking distance to willow park uh with all the amenities there so yeah you know just getting into wholesaling and now getting into renovating they've just made a lot of money from doing that so the bottom <laughs> corner there alejandro and his family he came to us about two years ago wanted us to help buy a property he bought a rental property in thorncliff and what he wanted to do is he wanted to get into using hard money to flip properties with. So that's what he's doing right now. He just closed on a property in Edmonton. Um, he got it through one of our partner realtors in Edmonton, uh, Michelle. I don't know, some of you guys who've been with our seminars long enough, you would have seen her when she lived in Calgary. But she helped him buy kind of a rundown property that he's using hard money to purchase and hard money to renovate. And he's anticipating making $100,000 on that property. Yeah, so he's going through exactly what we teach. And if that interests you, we can definitely help out with that. Tim, why don't we talk about Jonathan? Jonathan in the middle there. Jonathan is actually, um, he's done a couple of deals with us. The first one was just yeah. a piece of land on Center Street. Yeah. Um, he wants to develop a medical office on that. So that's a, an ongoing project. He's going through the, the city right now with all the permitting process. The thing that he's standing on right now is his land deal in Bear's Paw. He bought a parcel of land. It was 2.1 acres. Yeah. Something 21. like that. 21 acres. Sorry, 21 acres <laughs> in Bear's Paw. Um, it's just off the Highway 1A, about two minutes out of Calgary. Yeah, yeah. So he bought it for 1.6. We're looking to subdivide this into 17 lots, 17 parcels. And each lot, Tim, what were the numbers on it? It was just ridiculous. He bought for 1.6. I think the profit range was each lot would roughly sell between now, Tim, geez. A million. A million, yeah. We were looking at selling each lot for roughly 700,000. Now each lot would sell for a million. 
Geez, he's going to make a lot of money off this. It's, it costs a lot of money to subdivide, but now it's totally worth it. And that's just something else that, that he wanted to do. Uh, the last person here, Mark Kelly, he is one of our favorite guys. Uh, he does rent to owns and he actually works with people that don't have the credit right now to qualify yep. for a mortgage, gets them back on track. It's the right way to do rent to owns, but rent to owns can be a, a great way if you if you're not cash flowing enough right now, because when you do a rent to own, you get a large deposit. I know Mark was taking twenty thousand dollar deposit on his on his um, rent to own properties, which is huge, yeah. and then getting those people to work with the mortgage broker, qualifying two, three, four years, and then they would pay rent credits. Tim, the rent credits were like five hundred dollars a month. Yeah. So he was earning an extra five hundred dollars a month. He got twenty thousand up front, and he had a built in price at the end and made a killing of helping people um, do rent to owns and then helping them with the end goal of actually owning. Yeah, so there's all kinds of alternative strategies that you can use, even if you don't have any cash or credit of your own, like we spoke about earlier, to uh, change your life and help you get ahead. The final slide we're gonna talk about is these people here, um, changing your life with legal basement suites. Now, everyone in, oh, every client in these pictures here legalized at least one basement suite. And they're having huge success because what we've we've harped on is all these illegal suites that are in the city. If you take the time and the effort to legalize them, that's going to not only increase your property value, but it's going to increase your rent by know, forty percent. I know this guy is on the call here. Hey, Mark, if you could just put in there what you bought your Inglewood condo, oh, not condo, duplex for. And then someone offered you money for it not long ago, I think. What Mark's what you, a gentleman beside that uh, yellow fridge there. Yeah, was, uh, there's a rumor going around that he took that fridge home and he's using it in his current house. We're not sure about that. but um, Anyway, so Mark's there. He might put it in there for us. But I think the numbers we bought around 425. And right now, he bought for 375. Jeez, I'm we're off. <laughs> okay, 375. And then Mark, what do you think that's worth? Uh, today. And I'll just quickly explain this. It's one block from the river. It's really just a few blocks from restaurants seen in Inglewood. And Inglewood, I just posted on our Facebook page, it got voted uh, one of the best communities to in live the in. Country. And so, <laughs> in the country. Yeah. And you know what? We heard this about a year ago, Tim. Yeah. People were telling us they love Inglewood, especially young people, just because um, you can ride everywhere. You can get the e-bikes, e or your shared rides or whatever. Yeah. And you can walk to the pubs, you can walk to the restaurants and it's close to downtown. So you can walk to work as well. So um, I don't know what it's worth right now, Mark, if someone, someone was offering next door, it was something ridiculous what it was worth. And off oh, 565. So Mark bought for 375. Uh, next door was being sold. Well, next door sold for and 565. Mark, you legalized the suite for about 2,500 bucks, something like that. So it was very, very cost effective to legalize it. Now he's got two suites. They're legal. They're never going to get shut down. And he's cash flowing really, really well. Yeah. So, so I mean, here's a story. Mark lives up north. So he met us and, and really had to rely on our- Works up north. Works up north. Um, had to rely on our expertise to pick him the right property and obviously going from 375 um no legal suite in the other side so marks is legal and it only cost him under three thousand dollars to turn it into a legal yeah. suite um and we can't even find a good legal suite of property tim even in that area even under under you can't even find it yeah you can't even find under 600 so there you go but all these people have gone through it uh we help people go through that process simply because they can earn more money when they um, rent out yeah. that suite. And guess what? When the suite is legal, this is why we want people to do it. Um, you can then go borrow against the equity that you've created. Sometimes you can do a legal suite, like in Mark's case. So he put the legal suite in for under 3000 We knew straight away, Tim, it was probably worth forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 more after that was done. But now it's even worth five sixty five. dollars yeah. He could borrow against the equity and go again whenever he's ready to do that. So yeah. That's the whole purpose of doing legal suites. Top left, Cole, there we've talked about him and Tasha, about their two uh, properties. Underneath them is Brandon. He actually came to us as a joint venture partner with mm -hmm. another one of our yeah. clients. 
They bought this house in oh. Winston Heights. Yeah. Winston, Winston Heights. Heights yeah. They legalized the basement suite. They put a garage yeah. in the back of the property. They put it in their mortgage in a yeah, mortgage purchase plus mortgage. improvements. They built a garage. From... Yeah. So they, I know the numbers. They built. They bought for three ninety, um, but they borrowed. I think close to four forty because they legalized yeah. the suite and put in this massive garage. And we can tell you in Winston Heights, you can't find a house under six hundred thousand. This was done just in the last year and a half. So is it possible to find these properties? Yes, it may not be in Winston Heights right now, but it's our job to go find another community that it's going to happen in. And we can tell you there's hotspots all over the city, even in the Northeast, yeah. we're seeing areas, but there are still areas that you have to avoid. And we go through that with our education and the reasoning behind all of that. Okay, bottom left, this is uh, Tiffany and Brandon. They're standing on the deck of their house in Citadel, which yeah. has a legal suite in the basement. Yeah, He's done a legal suite in his Beddington house. Yep. And mm -hmm. he has another joint venture oh, yeah. in Acadia. In Acadia. Yeah. Yeah. That was an off-market property yeah. he got as well. So he has three properties. They just recently got married. And um, so he's got he's got three legal suite properties. Yeah. Right. So that's changed his life in that way. Up top here, top right, that's uh, Daniel Kelly. Uh, actually, Mark Kelly's son, yep. the other side. Yeah, that's his son. He's got how many properties now? Yes, I think he's on his third property. Okay. Well, yeah, his dad's his yeah. four properties. And he's just, yeah, we've got a video on him. He had three properties under under 30. And now I think he's on his fourth property. Already, yeah, so. and this property that he's standing in, he actually built the suite in the basement to legal standards. So he did that all on his own. Mm -hmm. And he's having success with that one. The next couple down here, the guy with the toque and the woman in the front there folding the, the booklet there, um, that's Lisa and Fraser. They bought a house in Southwood. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's in Haysboro, but it's actually in Southwood. Mm -hmm. And the thing about this house is it's a bi-level and it came with two separate heat sources, two hot water tanks. Everything was separate, top and bottom. And it was a bi-level from the 60s. She had a feeling that it was purpose-built up-down duplex. Mm -hmm. So she went and did some research with the city. It was a purpose-built duplex. So she had to convince them of this, which she did. She went back and, and found the original design or something like this from the city. And the city gave her the secondary suite sticker just like that because everything was separate. Yeah, awesome. They're both Air Canada pilots and doing extremely well, own a bunch of real estate. And then the bottom guy is Daniel. Uh, Daniel came to us, he's a bit of an older guy, came to us, we picked him up a couple of townhouses, he JV'd with this home yeah. in Thorncliffe as well, and once again, the townhouses this year have gone up probably 10 to 15%, yeah. Tim, on two townhouses he owns by himself, and then this Thorncliffe property's gone from 400 all the way up to 600,000. Yeah, so. and, and if you notice what we're talking, we're talking about certain communities, and the names of those communities come up fairly frequently. Because those are the communities that at this point in time, you can get cash flowing properties. If you were talking to us three years ago, we would be talking about communities that were a little closer in from those communities. So while we're talking about Thorcliffe and Huntington Hills now, three years ago, we were talking about Highwood and Highland Park. They're the next communities closer to downtown. And as the prices go up in those communities, they don't cash flow anymore for the new buyers. So we have to go a little further out to get the cash flowing properties. Um, so you'll notice this if you go back and you trace us through our, our client interviews and where their communities are. As time goes by and the properties get a little more expensive, we have to move to the spillover community, which is the next community out um, to generate the cash flow. Mm -hmm. And we do talk about spillover communities quite a bit in some of our other videos. You can see them all on, on our YouTube Crew TV. Yeah. Okay, so that brings our seminar pretty much to a close. Thank you for sticking with us. I know there's a lot to talk yeah, about. Geez, it was a lot tonight. Hey, we're just going to quickly go through this. If you haven't read our free ebook, One Million Reasons to Buy Real Estate, you download it off our, off our website. Our website is um, crewrealestateinvesting.com. You just go on there. You'll find all of these goodies. Um, it's a free read. And if you are thinking of getting into investing in real estate, it goes through the core fundamentals that you should know what you're getting. And into. it's a free download. Go ahead and download it and get all the information you can from it. Yep. The next thing we're going to talk about is our Fear, Fearless Real Estate uh, book. We wrote this a couple of years ago during COVID. And again, 
all of our clients are on the front page or the front cover there because there's all of their stories are in the book. We talk about how they made, they got success using every single real estate investment strategy out there. Yeah, it's a really, really good read. It's 20 bucks on our website. Um, you just order it and it will be delivered. Next thing is, this isn't for everybody. We want to stress, you don't have to do this course. It's for investors that want to really grab it and go with it. Um, what you get, it's $97 per month. Uh, there is a one-time fee if you'd rather do that. Totally up to you. You save it. I think you save 200 bucks by doing the one-time fee. Um, you become a life member of our investment course. It's designed to get you a million dollars worth of equity. Um, we give you the strategy. We give you um, the planning around that, the financing planning. And we see you through. You yeah, know. the number one thing that you get with this course is you get access to us. Um, we're there only a phone call away for whatever issue that comes up throughout your investing uh, journey, your real estate investing journey. Yeah, you get off-market properties, you get all the analysis. Um, it's for investors that really just want to be part of a network. And we find the investors that are part of the network, they actually get there. So yeah. that is the huge difference. Um, and that's something you can book a meeting to see if it's for you or not. Uh, the next thing is to see what our investors do. Just so you can see, you can go on our crew TV and you can basically um, see what these guys are actually doing. And if you want to see more of what they're doing, you can look at Mark Chalk in the chat there. He okay. did a before and after. The stove squad. Oh. <laughs> I thought the yellow stove looked good, man. They're coming back. So there's Mark's uh, before and after. And Mark, it looks like you just painted those cabinets. You didn't, um, you didn't get new cabinets, which is great. And... <laughs> And so, you know what? We've got lots of fun stories on Crew TV. We put that out there so you can see if investing's for you. We're not here to push you on it. We're here to continually educate you. Um, our next seminar will be in two weeks' time. And uh, if you did like us, please tell your friends at work or wherever you are tomorrow to join us. You never know. It may change their life as well. Yeah, and we talked about different types of strategies earlier on. Um, you can see that all of these interviews are with clients that are doing different strategies. So if you're interested in a specific strategy, just go on Crew TV and look for that strategy, that interview, and you can see how these people are having success. And it's we're not just interviewing the young people. There's older people that are having mm -hmm. huge success uh, with real estate investing as well. So we help people of all ages and Crew TV really showcases what we do. Yep. So if you think it's for you, uh, please join us in two weeks time and we'll be happy to have you back. And once again, if you think real estate investing is for you, please send us an email. That would be the best way to get hold of us. And we'd be happy to meet with you, do a Zoom or in person. We're getting a lot of people coming down to our office lately, which is great. Yeah. And um, we're happy to, you know, tell you the truth about what real estate can do for you. Yeah, so thanks for bearing with us during this lengthy seminar. Uh, we hope you got tons of good information out of it and there's more to come because we put these seminars on every two weeks. So thank you very much and we'll see you in two weeks. Thank you.